If you're moving to Atlanta, Georgia, here's what you need to know. The public school system in Metro Atlanta starts super early. I guess this is not normal for the rest of the country, but in Fulton County, the public school system starts April 8th. And then in Gwinnett County, which is just a little northeast of Fulton County, the public school system starts August 10th. And in Cobb County, which is northwest of Atlanta, Cobb County public schools start August 1st. This certainly makes for short summers for students, but if you're thinking about moving to Atlanta, you really need to keep those school start dates in mind. Property taxes. In Fulton County, property taxes are due November 15th, but Atlanta property taxes are due October 31st. And in Gwinnett County, property taxes are due October 15th. And in Cobb County, property taxes are also due October 15th. Here in Metro Atlanta, when we pay our property taxes, we're paying for the previous year, as opposed to other states in the United States where you pay for property taxes for the upcoming year. So when you pay for your property taxes at the end of October or middle of October, you're paying for that very year. Also, if you're thinking about moving to Atlanta, you really need to know there's one way you can save a pretty significant amount of money on your yearly property taxes. Before I tell you about that, just want to let you know if you're thinking about moving here or you just have any questions about what it's like to live in Atlanta, feel free to call or text me anytime. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you so much to everyone who has reached out to me asking me about living in Atlanta. My favorite thing to do is helping people get acquainted with my hometown. Now, the way that you can save on property taxes is to file for a homestead exemption. This will save you about 5% on your yearly property taxes and the homestead exemption is due April 1st. So you definitely don't want to forget those very important dates. Okay, let's talk about how to try to avoid the rush hour traffic here in Atlanta. Keep in mind that most people live in the suburbs of Atlanta and work in Atlanta. So you can imagine during rush hour traffic, the majority of the traffic is headed into the city of Atlanta. And then in the evening times, when people are going home from work, the majority of the rush hour traffic is going outside of the city of Atlanta and into the suburbs. But if you live in the city of Atlanta and you work in the suburbs of Atlanta, which is very possible, you could essentially avoid the majority of that rush hour traffic. Now, keep in mind that uh, the traffic in Atlanta is like all the time. It is worse during rush hour traffic, but during evenings and weekends, there's also traffic in the city of Atlanta. One of the best ways to try to avoid that traffic is to not use the interstate system. That's really where the majority of the traffic is. When people talk about the traffic in Atlanta, they're referring to the traffic on Interstates 75, 85, also Interstate 20 and 285. That's really where the majority of the traffic is. So if you want to try to avoid that, depending on where you're working and where you're living, you can try to avoid those interstate systems because that's what everybody uses to get to work. Which brings me to my next point. If you're thinking about living in Atlanta, you should know that the majority of the city of Atlanta and the metro area around Atlanta really requires that you have a vehicle. Not everything is super close, you know, so for the most part, you're going to need a vehicle to get to the grocery store to get to shops and restaurants. Now, there are a few places where you could live and theoretically not have to have a vehicle like Midtown in Atlanta is a very great part of the city of Atlanta that's super walkable. You could live in Midtown and have easy access to things that are super important, like the grocery store and not have a vehicle. Also in the suburbs, uh, Marietta Square, which is something that we often talk about on this channel, Marietta Square is very compact and has a lot of those kinds of shops and restaurants and grocery stores super close by. So you could live near the square there in Marietta 
and potentially not have a vehicle. Also, Alpharetta has downtown Alpharetta. Same thing, you could live within walking distance of the downtown area. Um, and then Swanee, Swanee has a great downtown area as well. So if you're living close to those city centers or downtown areas of the suburbs, it would be very possible to not have a vehicle and still be able to get around very easily. However, the public transportation system here in Atlanta is not very good. We do have public transportation, it's called MARTA, but it's not really the best kind of public transportation. I think in other states and in other cities, I think the public transportation system is very good. Not so much here in Atlanta. So you could get away with living in an area like Midtown, not have a vehicle, but keep in mind that the public transportation is not very good. Also, MARTA does not even go into some places like Cobb County. So it doesn't travel really all around the metro Atlanta area, which is also something super important to know if you are thinking about living in Atlanta. Okay, another thing super important that you should know if you're gonna be moving to Atlanta is that the location of the Atlanta airport is really like on the south side of metro Atlanta. So many of the cities that we talk about on this channel, like uh, Marietta or Alpharetta, those cities are not very close to the airport. Many times, people who want to live in Atlanta want to have that kind of close proximity to Atlanta, but the cities that are closer to the airport are cities like Hapeville, College Park, East Point, maybe Morrow, Fayetteville. Peachtree City is a little farther out there. I mean, it's maybe 30 minutes to the airport. And so a lot of people who need to live very close to the airport sometimes live in Peachtree City. The issue with cities like East Point and College Park is that unfortunately, the school systems there are not very good, but they are very close to the airport, five to 10 minutes. Peachtree City has excellent school districts and is relatively close to the airport, about 30 minutes. But if we're talking about cities like Marietta or Alpharetta, you should expect about an hour drive to the airport. Certainly something to keep in mind if you're thinking about moving to a city like Marietta or Alpharetta, the commute to the airport is going to be at least an hour. If you're thinking about moving to Atlanta, another big one is, you know, what's like the process of making that move to Atlanta look like, especially if you're coming from out of state. Many times people will call me and ask me, you know, what does it look like to see homes if I'm not there in person? And what we do here at Living in Atlanta is we do virtual tours. So very often what we'll do is set up a phone call with the person who's wanting to move to Atlanta, get their criteria for the kind of home that they're looking for, and then eventually we'll come up with a list of homes that you might be interested in seeing and I will go out and we can do a virtual tour, whether it be FaceTime or over Zoom and give you a video showing of the homes that you're interested in seeing. We can see enough of those homes, as many as you'd like to get you a good idea of what the homes are like here in Atlanta. When you have found a home that you wanna make an offer on, we can do all of the signings and all of the documents virtually. We can do e-signatures for all of those things and we can submit an offer on a home that you are interested in. In Georgia, the home buying process is typically made up of about 30 days. The first week is usually the inspection period. The next two or three weeks is the lender doing their research on approving your loan. And the last week is the closing attorney doing the title work to make sure that the title of the home can be transferred to the new buyer. So during that first week, we would have an inspector go out to the home and send us a report of his inspection that we could look over to determine what kind of changes we need to make to the contract. And then in the next two or three weeks, the lender would ask you all kinds of questions about your approval and your financial situation to make sure that you can acquire the loan that you're looking for and then in that last week, the closing attorney would go over the title to make sure that it can be transferred. Once the closing day comes, we can do a mail away signing for buyers who are coming from out of state so that they don't have to be in Georgia for the closing. Again, if you have any questions about that process, you can always reach out to me anytime. I'm always happy to help. Another big one that you need to know about if you're going to move to Metro Atlanta is that not all the suburbs are the same. For example, Alpharetta is one of the most expensive suburbs to live in. Many times people who are moving to the Metro Atlanta area really like Alpharetta. Alpharetta is a super popular city, but you really need to know that it's one of the most expensive suburbs in all of Metro Atlanta. 
The suburbs that are around Alpharetta, like Marietta or Suwannee and Duluth, those cities, those suburbs have very similar amenities to Alpharetta, but cost way less to live in. The average home value in Alpharetta is about 650,000, whereas the average home value in Marietta is closer to 500,000, and in Suwannee, maybe closer to 450 or 500. So while Alpharetta is a super popular city to live in, you really need to know that there are many other suburbs and cities similar to Alpharetta where you can get similar amenities and not have to pay nearly as much as what it would cost to live in Alpharetta. Something else you should know if you're going to move to Atlanta is that yes, cost of living in Metro Atlanta is very low, but cost of living here is increasing very quickly. In 2020 and 2021, home values here rose about 25%, which is one of the highest cities in all of the United States. Many times people come to the South and to Georgia and Metro Atlanta because the cost of living here is so low, but with so many people being able to work virtually, uh, you know, work from home, it's very common now for a lot of people who have that ability are here moving to Metro Atlanta. This in turn is making a lot of people come to Metro Atlanta, which is making the cost of living rise significantly in the home values rise significantly as well, really catching up to a lot of the other major metropolitan cities in the US. Sometimes people coming from out of state will ask me if there is a specific lender here in Georgia that I use for buying a home or that I refer for buying a home. And we do have some lenders that we have worked with in the past that I'm happy to share contact information for. But keep in mind that the lender who you work with to buy a home here in Georgia or in Metro Atlanta does not have to be in Georgia. Any lender from anywhere in the country can be used to buy a home in Georgia. You just need to make sure that the lender that you are using is licensed to work in Georgia. But keep in mind that most lenders are licensed to work in most of the states. So it's very possible to find a local lender where you live to purchase a home here in Metro Atlanta. Yes, it's super hot here in Atlanta. It does get 90, 95 degrees, sometimes it reaches 100 and it's very humid. But what you should know is that that's really only one or two months out of the year. I would say late July, beginning of August is when most of the very warm or hot temperature is. You know, we do have a lot of humidity here and it's the end of July is where you'll find those 95 degree days. Outside of those times, the temperature here is not really that bad. And then, of course, the winters here in Metro Atlanta are super mild, maybe as low as 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the evening times. And then in the daytime, during the winter times, the average temperature is probably about 35 degrees. So overall, the temperatures here in Metro Atlanta are great. It's just a super common thing that happens here. Uh, maybe it's the Southern hospitality in us. You know, when we're driving in the car, we see a pedestrian, it's just super common to wave hi to them. It's not that we all know each other. That's just a typical cultural thing that we do here in the South and in Metro Atlanta. And then something else that you really need to know about if you're going to be moving to Metro Atlanta is that Metro Atlanta has a population of 6 million people, but the city of Atlanta only has a population of 500,000 people. That means that 5.5 million people live around Atlanta and not in the city of Atlanta. If you wanna know what the best suburbs are to live in around the city of Atlanta, click this video, I'll see you there.